Hi everyone, this is Wendy Lee coming from YouTube channel of Come to Yeshua Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth and also known as Papa God Yahweh's prophetic and teaching ministry. I have a new member of my family. This is Miss Karen. Isn't she beautiful? I just got her the other day from my daughter and in, in such a miraculous way. Um, hey, God is so good, isn't he? He can just turn the most critical, depressing, heart-shattering moment. He can just turn it around and make things new just like that in your life. That's what he did with Karen here. Karen was a gift from God just exactly when I needed her. So I thank God for her. I thank God for his miraculous ways, his, his loving, gentle, sometimes stern but needed treatment of of me and and you guys because we can be disobedient children and we need to be set in line again just like we're parents and we need to set our children in line we need to be set and to refocus on what's important and what's important the only person that's important is Jesus Christ. Our very life is about Jesus Christ because he created us to have relationship with him. Hallelujah. So you'll probably see Karen on and off my lap in this video. She's the sweetest little kitty. So I'm going to give you Father's messages from 5th to the 7th. And I received the one on October 5th at 1241 a.m. Daughter, Wendy Lee, write Father God Yahweh, Elohim, Adonai's words that you are hearing directly from me. Father cautions my saints. Do not think you know my plans or my ways. If anyone says they speak from me, Jehovah God Almighty, you must have discernment. Not in my holy word, not from me, your holy God. There are many who try to ride on the coattails of my true prophets and use recycled messages with their lies. Father is warning, ask me in prayer, my saints. Father truly has my prophets, and they have been ordained directly from my son Yeshua. Be aware of the counterfeits. If it does not bring my people any hope, then flee from it. For Father doesn't want any of my creation to languish in my fires in hell. My messages are to warn and to present my son Yeshua's loving kindness in his free gift. Sometimes Father needs to add chastisement and sometimes much encouragement, but they will always point to my only begotten son, Yeshua HaMashiach. Remember, God gives his glory to no one, so beware. The wolves are running scared as Father exposes them bare. Run, they will try, but they cannot escape from my all-seeing eye. The devil has promised them pie in the sky, but oh, does he lie. They chose to fall for it, but now they have fallen from it. The bell that is cracked 
will soon be hijacked. For the devils can't stand for what it stands for, liberty. Father tells you with much glee, you'll be in my ready army, and all will be alarmed. When my army ranks receive my command, disarm all the ones who have mocked my son. Father loves and Thursday, October 6th, Father's Message, 12.14 a.m. Excuse me. Daughter Wendy Lee, write Father's stern words to my children. Father God Yahweh will say there is coming a day when all will change. When I send my perfect son Yeshua, all will know him but all will not be happy to see him, for they will know who they rejected. My beautiful son, whom, who they have shunned, he is the one, and they shall be stunned after his great retrieving of his beautifully adorned bride. Father says in my word, they will try to hide in the rocks to keep them from the son's wrath for they chose the wrong path. There will be no escaping when my scorpions will be deployed. I'm sorry, the cat just scratched my legs. There will be no escaping when my scorpions will be deployed and send a scathing message for those who aren't marked by me, God Jehovah. Their sting will cause much pain and they will be to blame, the ones who wear their shame. First, which is now, there will be a wow. You say, how? The dice is rolling now. With great momentum, Babylon will be exposed for all to see. All hands that has received the blood of my innocence will receive a great penance with a sentence of no repentance. The choice was made and Father knows will not change for my son. The demons have infiltrated my America and Father will begin disbanding them. Two, sorry, two forces colliding, but my son Yeshua's bride will be the victor for Yeshua is a control and will command his people to activate and help bring in lost souls. Many will be brought in by my great harvest that contains a heavy cost. The great I am will now explain much. Things will get more rough, but you will have my son Yeshua's touch of great love. Father loves that is Father's three messages to me and to his children. And Father has commissioned me to proclaim for three and a half years, the King of glory is coming. And who can stop him? Make straight his path. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says it in his word. He has commissioned me to proclaim this and to teach his bride how to become a wise virgin because some of his bride is filthy. Some of his bride is halfway dirty. Some of his bride doesn't know a clue about how to live for him. That's why he has me up here proclaiming, make straight his path. We don't know when Father's going to send his son, but we do know he's going to send him. And I don't know after this three and a half years what's going to happen. It would be awesome if he sent his son after this. 
But we just don't know. And Father says in one of his messages here, do not try to understand his ways or something to that effect. What, what did Father say? I think that's back on one of the first messages, October 4th, October 5th. Father cautions my saints. Do not think you know my plans or my ways. As I have said before, I'm going to say it again. God has given us an outline. He's given us, us his instructions by his holy word. He has filled in some of these instructions, some of his word more with prophetic messages. He's filled in some of the details. But it's still like an outline because we still cannot know Father's plans. We still do not know when, when this thing that he says is going to happen is going to happen. Now, he may grab a prophet or prophetess during this season or, or next season, whenever he wills, to give a time frame for these things, but he has not in this ministry. He has given us many more details than, than what we could, what I could ever imagine. Um, and some of these messages are very, very hard for me to put out. But I must listen to God. I'll go back to what his scripture says. When, when Peter and the other disciples were beaten for preaching Jesus, we should obey God rather than men because they were telling him or them, the disciples, not to preach in that name. And Peter said, we must obey God rather than men. Well, God Almighty has placed me in this ministry, and I will obey God rather than men. And I will say Father's messages. And I will preach the Holy Word of God. And, and give you at least bits and pieces. I don't know hardly anything, but what I do know, I'm sharing with you guys. And I have been sharing this since he started this ministry. A little bit here and there, back in 2015, 2016, he had me saying a little bit. But it's all been from his word and from my experiences. And he's... He's taken that, and now he's really having me expound more and to, to preach and to feed his lambs and feed his sheep. Hallelujah. Without apologizing, I do that. I expound on his word and I and I and I preach through my experiences from what he has taught me directly and sometimes indirectly but we we must let the holy spirit teach us and and uh, and show us how to live for Christ and this is simply an aid to do that but absolutely certainly listen to the Holy Spirit because what I can say that God has taught me absolutely 100% is you cannot box God in don't even try it because you will fall on your face when you box God in I know because I have tried it. You will fall. 
So let God work in your life the way he wants to. Not the way you say he has to. The way he wants to. Because when you tell Lord Jesus that you don't want him to do a certain thing in your life, guess what? He's not going to do it. He won't go against your will. There are different layers to that. The first is giving your heart, mind, soul, body, free will to Jesus. Your free will all and forever to Jesus once. Then after that, your free will as you live daily in this life. That's what I'm talking about. He won't go against your free will. He has you. You're not going anywhere. You may think that you are too far gone in, in I've done this sin and how can I get back right with the Lord? Repent. You get on your face, your knees, or if you're physically unable to do that, God knows your heart. But you repent and you feel and, and you tell him how sorry you are for that for that sin, for sinning. And you get back up and walk forward in him. That's the key. Walk forward in him, not backwards. Don't remember that sin because the devil relishes for you to remember that sin and say, uh-uh, the devil saying, uh-uh, you can't walk forward in King Yeshua because you have this sin back here. Well, you tell the devil, Jesus has forgiven you of that sin back there. And you walk forward in him. Hallelujah. So we must repent. We must put on our holy armor of God, Ephesians 6. Uh, 10 through 18, and I'm going to look up that scripture about uh, capturing our thoughts. I apologize, I didn't know it earlier. I get confused between 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians, and I, uh, I, in the next, in the last video, I wanted to say 2 Chronicles. That's what was going to come out of my mouth, but then. I caught myself, no, it can't be Chronicles, that's the Old Testament. So, second, there I go again, second Corinthians chapter 10. I, that's what I thought it was, but I didn't want to say it just in case I wasn't correct. Second Corinthians chapter 10, and the, the very verse I'm referring to, is verse 5 but please read from 1 to 6 read 2nd Corinthians chapter 10 1 through 6 that will tell you about capturing your thoughts giving them giving them to the obedience of Jesus Christ and and also uh, he's telling us that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. God can pull down a stronghold, which is, which is a, I guess, a, a demon um, that's holding you into a sin. That's, that's the way that I think about it. Now, that's not intellectually correct. That's not biblically correct, probably. That's the way Wendy thinks about it to describe it to you. A stronghold where you can't get rid of that addiction or that sin that you keep sinning, 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 and you can't stop yourself. It's a stronghold. It's a demonic stronghold. And a demon won't let you out of it. Well, Jesus Christ can set you free from your chains and your bonds from that demon. And he can make that demon leave just like that. But you have to work at it. You have to really walk with Jesus. You, you have to give Jesus your all. 
If you want to walk through life with a demon screaming to get away from you, then you need to walk with Jesus in complete repentance. Closely with Jesus. And he will rid you of that stronghold. Glory to God. He will. But you have to do the work, my friend. He did all the work for us on his cross. He expects us to work. Also, it's two sides to a relationship, right? This is a relationship between you and Lord Jesus. And we have to work, and he, he's done all the work. But see, we have to work to be close to him. We have to go through things to be close to him. We, we have to know what his word says to be close to him. We have to apply his word to be close to him. We have to obey his word to be close to him. I've named, what, three things on how to be close to Lord Jesus. Biblical things. You must obey. He prefers obedience over sacrifice, his word says. You must Read his word. You, you must read his word and carry it in your heart. Like a frontlet on your forehead like they did in the Old Testament. And tell it to your, your family and your children. Of course, we have the scriptures now. But in the Old Testament, God said to, to keep alive what God has done for them. Talking about the Jewish people, the, the Hebrews. Keep alive telling your children and your grandchildren about what wonders God has done for them. We are to still do that. And we have his holy word now. So we need to teach our children God's word. That's a huge problem today. None of the children hardly are, are reared up, are, are taught God's holy word. Now, I'm not going to get into the indoctrination of the public schools. I'm, I'm not going to get into all that. But I am. In one of these videos, I am. I'm going there. It's important because every aspect of our life is affected. So we need to stay in God's word. We need to stay in repentance. And we need to stay obedient. Hallelujah. Now, if you, if you have committed a sin and you get hit by a bus, does that mean since you didn't repent for that sin that you're going to go to hell? If you believed in Jesus Christ and, and you accepted him in this life, you're going to heaven. It all depends on how you live your Christian life, how you live in heaven with Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's all I have for now. And I pray that Jesus blesses you so much in your walk with him and that you will dig deep into his word. And keep it in your heart. Hallelujah. To the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. And shalom.